All right, folks, we are starting up a new series. A um, bit different than what we've been playing normally. Uh, kind of throws back to Hacknet. That's actually where we got the idea to play this from. Somebody commented on one of my Hacknet videos that if I haven't played 19.4, I should play 19.4. So we're playing 19.4, which is what? Network intelligence and uh, something. I know it's on the screen, but I, I'm not looking at that image. Um, <laughs> It, the game was kind of annoying to get up and running in a way that I could capture it because when I when I first started it it wanted to use both of my monitors which I thought was interesting um, so it just had like my second one just kind of blanked out as like a I don't know there wasn't anything over there but even if I tried to switch it to you know capture my main monitor it wouldn't it would only capture the second one which nothing was happening on um, and the the setting menu wasn't available until we started a new game, which I thought was very peculiar. Um, and there was some funky intro cinematic, but I think I got all that fixed, and uh, I think I need to clear what little game progress that there's no game progress, but I need to technically start a new game now to get that uh, opening cinematic again. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Hive Mind Network Online, Channel 0093, Secure Uplink Initiated. Hackers break into financial institutions, cell phone networks, and personal email accounts. In support of our military and our government. So we need successful strategy. We collectively have a long way to go. Build and scout some funky teeth. Country needs for the decade out ahead. So we need an FTC to follow its statutory authority. Did they say FBC? Both online and off. The program uses facial recognition to constantly monitor citizens. The United States is aggressively tracking and deterring criminals and terrorists online. There we go. Network intelligence and technical something. <laughs> Evalu active. Evaluation team. Four. Yeah. All right. Uh, now we have two options here. We can do a user account. If we have an Allison Smith account, or we want to sign up for an even more immersive experience. Uh, I don't think we're interested in any of that. Um, but yeah, there was like no settings menu. I like why wouldn't there be a settings menu out here? Anyway, we're just gonna play incognito and user license. Why? Why wouldn't you have this when you start up the game? Uh, this is cool though. Down here though, where they talk about these Kali Linux and Cobalt Strike. These are these are two things that I actually use in my actual real world job. Um, so that's pretty cool. That, that already makes me pretty excited right there. Seeing that. Welcome, Agent. Uh, welcome to the Stinger OS. Please visit the academy to get your first assignment. Okay. Welcome to boot camp, recruit. I'm Sergeant Wheeler, and I'm here to teach you all you'll need to know to become an elite member of our cyber warfare unit. Your recruitment officer told me you've got a decent head on your shoulders, and I'm here to find out whether or not that's an accurate assessment. I sure hope you don't disappoint. We only take the best at 194. NIGHT stands for Network Intrusion and Technical Evaluation. Your task is to identify, infiltrate, and gather intelligence from computer systems used by enemies of the Black Watchmen. Governments are Black short Watchmen. on time and resources, so it's up to us to take action. We address imminent global threats that can't wait for bureaucracy. Because we're a covert organization operating outside the rules of engagement that govern our allies, intelligence agencies around the world seek our help. Before we cry havoc and let slip the dogs of war, you have some training to do. Ready for the challenge? Then let's lock in. Sure. So we're covert group operating outside of the normal channels, apparently. Um, all right, we, we only have one option here, so we'll enroll in the academy to learn how to use the Stinger OS. Your officers are there to guide you through each certification. Select the Stinger OS Basic certification in the panel on your left. That will bring up an information screen on your right. Then click Access Certification to begin training. Good luck, recruit. 
easy enough. Phase one ready. Sure. The Stinger operating system is our the own cyber warfare thing? and network intrusion platform. It's a beautiful piece of software built by combining the most advanced open source hacking modules from civilian and military sources. If you've experienced any penetration testing platforms like Kali or Metasploit, you'll recognize similarities. Neat. Zoning out already. Okay, I know most of you have the attention span of a goldfish when it comes to basic training, but mastering this intrusion platform is key to becoming a lethal cyber warfare agent in the field. Ready to get started? Let's familiarize ourselves with the Stinger OS menu. If this takes more than five minutes, I'll fire our user interface team. Hmm. Only kidding, it'll be easier to fire you. Less paperwork. Each certification is broken up into three stages, and your objective will automatically update as we progress. Click Initiate Phase 1 on your left panel, and I'll pass you over to one of our agents to take it from here. Dylan's trained many of our recruits, so you're in good hands. Alright, I'm liking what they're putting down so far. The, the graphics are kind of... I don't know, that's kind of weird. What is this triangle thing? But... Um, you know, they, they keep referencing all of this real world stuff, which big fan. That's why I liked Hacknet so much, because it was, it seemed pretty really like it had all the Linux commands and all that stuff. It was great. Um, but this is going even farther, it seems, and we can uh, launch your default. Well, okay, so they even have like external references to like the home pages of these things. That's awesome. And like I said, I've used uh, the, the, the Kali and Metasploit and Cobalt Strike and all that personally as well, so. That'll be pretty cool. Com check, 1127. Hey, this is Agent Dylan. I'll be your wingman during training. Word of advice, it's always the know-it-alls who make the biggest mistakes. We can't afford mistakes, so keep a level head. As Wheeler explained, you're starting basic and building up from there. Go to the information gathering menu on your left and launch the fingerprint module. Drag the window around a bit and uh, complete the test by typing the command help. Easy, right? Okay. So, open information gather menu, open the host fingerprint module, drag the window around, type the help command. Sure. Yeah. Stingeros is an advanced hacking platform designed specifically for cyber warfare. You have access to the complete suite of military grade hacking tools through this menu. Information gathering module initiated. I say that's the other thing. Most hacking stuff doesn't have pretty graphics. It's all just terminals and stuff. All right, uh, we can drag the blend window around. What do we have? Like different. Oh, that's cool. We have like little different desktops. So I guess if I did let it use my other window, I could like drag stuff over there. But that would just be kind of a pain for uh, for recording. So we'll stick with the uh, virtual virtual desktops. All right. Uh, host fingerprint version 1.3. Module executes an array of attack strategies to help you identify the technology or software sitting at the receiving end of a specific open port. Fingerprint starts by doing a full port scan. Oh, that's going to take a while. Full port scan. It's like 65,535 ports. Um, as soon as an open port is detected, it will inject a series of commands and probes to identify the technology behind it. If the installed technologies and versions are present in the exploit database, it will be flagged as vulnerable. Example, fingerprint extranet newsstreamlive.ca will try to identify the type of technologies behind any active port for the subdomain extranet newsstreamlive.ca. Run help command to display detailed explanation of this command. Great. Um, I wonder if that's a real website. <laughs> I'm almost tempted to open up a browser and uh, go there. Matter of fact, I'm going to. Um... Is there a browser in the game? I don't know if there's an in-game browser. I'll just do it on my phone. That's easy enough to do. I'm curious. Extra net. Especially since they were talking about uh, on the account thing, they were like, oh, real world ARGs and uh, things like that. Extra net news stream. Live dot ca can't be reached nx domain so doesn't exist oh well uh i guess that'd be giving them a bit too much credit huh 
All right, here's a list of available commands. Run, fingerprint, exit, purge. Great. Back to the certification. Excellent. Wow. You listen and follow basic <laughs> orders. That's not as common as you'd imagine. The Stinger OS lets you access resources from other divisions within the Black Watchmen. Division 40 is in charge of Imens, the imagery intelligence section, and Massens, the measurement and signature intelligence. They provide you with satellite feeds and drone coverage during operations. I'm not going to remember that. You can access these <laughs> services at the bottom of your screen. Division 40 is the fourth icon from the left. Click it and enter the following coordinates. 38 latitude, minus 77 longitude. Once you activate the satellite, click the back to globe link to end your task. Sure. This one, eh? Collection of background processes and external services you can leverage during your mission. You can quickly access specific interfaces like the imagery, dr drone and imagery intelligence through the menu at the bottom of your screen. So this, drone and imagery this thing. Intelligence active. Ooh. What did it say? I think this one was like minus 77. This one was like 33 or some, something. No. Um... I don't remember. <laughs> I don't. I don't remember. What was it? Thirty-eight. I was close. I was close. Thirty-eight. Drone and imagery intelligence. Thirty-eight. Active. Oh, that's cool. It's the Pentagon. So, good. that's good, I guess, yes. Okay. Nice! Before completing the certification, I want you to check out your agent profile. It's at the top left of your Stinger OS. Change your avatar and return here to finish this certification. Okay, you access agent profile at any time if you want to personalize the avatar, follow your career, or check the inventory. Okay. Uh, badge frames? No. Okay, we only have... I don't know what all that is. We have that. How do we... UI skins. Emblems. Here we go. Uh, what looks good? What looks good? That looks like the, uh, what is that cable network? NBC? No. The Peacock. Whatever it is. Um, so we got right now. We got all these locked ones. Oh man, we could be the classic hacker man. Is that, why, why do we have Emperor Palpatine? <laughs> what? The Matrix in the background. What the heck? And then we just have the Eye of Sauron. We have this dude from Star Trek. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, we have Austin Powers. Um, we have another Eye of Sauron. Random Sun. Mm -hmm. Private Investigator. They're the same. There's no, like... Anonymous Guy Fox, though. Missed opportunity, I must say. Um, let's go with this. Sure. Okay. Now we have basic OSINT. Drag the globe to explore all the areas. What is this even supposed to... What is... I don't know what the point of this is. These little things down here are changing, but... I don't know what that is. 
Oh. Okay, so that is the certification we just got. So the globe kind of fills in. This is what we're working on next. I see. That's that's very peculiar, but sure. <laughs> Why not? Impressed. Agent Dillon seems keen to train you. He must see some potential. All right, you've completed your first certification. You have another 29 left. You don't need to 29? do it all. 29? If you are curious, you're welcome to dive in. Not all certifications are about command lines and typing Good text. Good lord. Our work also involves other forms of investigation, like digital forensics or signal intelligence. We'll learn them soon enough, but you have to master the command line first. It's a standard weapon and a valuable one. Well, Some she's of this right may there. already be familiar, but it never hurts to recap. Let's start with OSINT. Open source intelligence is the act of gathering intel from public data. Regardless of the nature of your target, there's a strong likelihood they've left a mark somewhere on the internet. Collecting all this public information mm -hmm. lets you map a target's network infrastructure and identify its point of vulnerability. Your first certificate will focus on domain name reconnaissance. Cool. Domain names save us from having to memorize IP addresses. All we need to do is type in a domain name to retrieve a website or access a service. These domain names are managed by a domain name server, or DNS for short. That's great for us because we can extract data about our targets from these servers. Agent Dillon will show you how to find domain and subdomain names, even if the target didn't intend to make the information public. Yep, that's all above board as well. Uh, there's a uh, tool, I don't know if they'll reference it or not, but I believe it's called a Multigo Chlorine, which is used for uh, kind of, you know, uh, your open source reconnaissance before, you know, and mapping things out and linking things together. Man, I love this part. It's fun to see what you newbies are made of and separate the wheat from the chaff. Right. Domain name reconnaissance. You'll need the DNS and vhost mapping module, which you'll find in the information gathering menu. The first command you've got to learn is the S fuzzer. S fuzzer launches a good old fashioned dictionary attack against the domain name, trying thousands of the most common subdomains used on the net. If you S fuzz a domain name like 194.com, the dictionary will first try the obvious www before moving on to other subdomains like mail, ftp, or extranet.1914.com. Each time a domain name answers positively to an S fuzzer request, it will show as active. Since that's all automated, you just need to decide how long to run the dictionary attack. The longer you run it, the more words it tries, and the more potential access points you gain. Remember, the attack always starts with the most common words. 10 to 20 seconds is a good enough benchmark for easy targets. Well, what are you waiting for? You're the one who needs to get certified, not me. Open that DNS and vhost module and launch a 10 second dictionary attack on the domain name 1914.com. If you get stuck, follow the instructions on the terminal. All right, that's easy enough. Information gathering. Yep. Information gathering module initiated. Okay, we have a bunch of stuff here. Uh, module is recon and mapping tool designed to help you discover subdomains in its DNS configuration. These tools are here to help you map out uh, any exposed online services. S fuzzer is a dictionary attack strategy to find common subdomains and possible variation of a target like www forum internet. Etc. Uh, why did that happen? So let's see. Is internet? Yeah, right. I don't know why it just jumped down there. Weird. Um, where were we? Using a distributed proxy network. Yeah, that's right. Tools process on average 150 attacks per second on a specific domain name and its servers. 150. That seems excessive. Um, but I guess, you know, if it's got a big old dictionary, it's got to get through that pretty fast. Uh, you can define the duration of the attack as a parameter. I feel like that would set off some alarm bells if you're blasting it 150 tries a second. There's somebody somewhere would have to be alerted to that. Um, so example, uh, blah, 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 15 second on the domain. Oh, okay, so we can specify the time in advance. That's good. Um, OSINT scan. Sorry, it's just a lot of... Uh, OSINT scan uses... 
public search engine databases is to discover existing subdomains, various query strategies, it'll find all index pages, reconstruct the target subdomain configuration, and it does 100 search engine results every 5 seconds. You need to find the depth of the research as a parameter. That seems a little more, uh, I don't know, clandestine. Less likely to be noticed than the first option. <laughs> All right, we have an example. Search any trace in Google's database with the scan limits at the 500 first results. So yeah, who's going to, it's Google. Who's going to care? Nobody's going to care. Google's not going to care. I'm sure they get hit with that all the time. Um, who is? Uh, uses online services. Look up information about a domain name. Who is search engines? Look up data across multiple registrars. Yeah, so that um, who is database. It's a real thing as well. Um, basically, whenever you uh, get a domain, like uh, memorydemise.com, um, or you know whatever they got newstreamlive.ca whatever you when you when you buy it when you register it, you have to provide um, name address phone number email and that gets put into the who is database so that people can say well who owns this do who's responsible for this domain name um, now there are services which uh, you know will uh, kind of keep your information out of that database as well they generally charge for it but some places offer for free as well but um, a very useful tool when you're uh, analyzing logs. Um, so you can also attach geolocation data to it as well. Um, so we got the help command, display detailed explanation. Um, I've been talking and babbling about this for a while, so I don't even really remember. Oh, right here, enter the command S phone. That's convenient that that's right up there. I was about to click that button to go figure out what I needed to do. But we're all good, so we can say... Uh, so is there 194.com dash t10. So we want it for it to be 10 seconds. That will do its thing. That seems like it's 10 actual seconds as well. Uh, <laughs> I misspelled it. Let's try that again. There we go. That looks a little better, huh? Hive mind. Test. Okay. Another way of finding domain names is through a search engine's database, like Google, Yahoo, Bing, and the Bing. Lips. Nobody Ask uses Bing. Useful Nobody uses that Sometimes either. <laughs> a search engine will accidentally index a private subdomain because of an oversight, leak, reference, or careless third party. We're here to take advantage of that mistake. I want you to use the OS int scan command on 194.com and specify a database to look through. To look through Google Database, you will type dash s google.com. To ask for the first 500 results in the search engine, you simply add dash d 500. So, your final command will be os int scan dash s google.com dash d 500. If you get stuck, the instruction should help. It's actually hilarious. They put an ask g use. My mom used to... That used to be her go-to spot. AskJeeves.com. All right, uh, DNS host. Gathering module yep. Initiated. Then it wanted a OS int scan of 194.com. Then it was uh, what does that say up there? Dash s. Sure. Dash s. Google.com dash D five hundred. Yeah, code and Apache. Interesting. And also server. And then Apache web server running, which is a real thing on uh, Linux. The Apache two web server. Excellent work. You know what you have now? The expertise to quickly identify potential entry points in an enemy network. You have the keys to their house. Of course, once you're inside the house, you'll need a new strategy. There's one last trick to the OSN scan command. 
Sometimes, a server can host multiple domains. Though one domain could be protected, another could be vulnerable. IP addresses are unique numbers that identify internet servers, and if you search by IP, you'll find all domains and subdomains present on that server. This doesn't just locate entry points. It helps discover links between organizations, like a supplier or a sister company that shares the same server. Right, let's finish up. Execute an OSINT scan on our IP address, 98.124.199.93. More props, that's actually a valid address. Um, a lot of times, games will have ones that are too big, too small. Information gathering module um, initiated. A lot of movies also do that, where they're like, they don't use real addresses. I mean, this might be a private address for all I know, but um, uh, maybe, I don't know. I'm not too... It might be a Class B private address, in which case, you know, there's no, no harm in actually going there on your real computer. But why are we using Bing? Nobody uses Bing. The only people who use Bing are the people that Microsoft pays for their sponsorships. Horrible search engine. Alright. Sure. Well, look at that. We've got... Getting more pieces of... This thing. <laughs> Alright, we can do advanced or fingerprint. This one comes first, so let's just do that. You're almost there. Only a few more steps until we give you access to more powerful modules. We need to know you're comfortable with a sidearm before handing what? you a grenade launcher. So, let's oh, finish the basics. Oh, it's a basics. metaphor. <laughs> this next certificate covers advanced OSINT tactics. I was about to say, what you talking about? Time to play around with the tools you've learned. I've set up various subdomains on 194.com, and I want you to test out different SFuzzer dictionary attacks. You'll notice contrasting results between a 5 second attack and a 20 second one. Follow the objectives to complete the task. Alright, so we just do two different scans, one that's 5, one that's 20. No problem. Information gathering module initiated. Yep. Uh, oops. Fuzzer. 194.com dash t5. So I'll find basically nothing. And then 20. Should find a bit more in theory. Server. Really? Servers that far back in their list of common words? Hmm. Now, I want you to see the difference between an S fuzzer and OS int scan attack. Run both a 15 second S fuzzer and a 500 deep OS int scan against 194.com. Sure. Uh, so why are we doing this? We just did a 20 second one. I think we know. I think we know what this 15 second one is going to turn up. The fact that it actually lasts 15 seconds is kind of annoying too. <laughs> but, you know, whatever. Can't even queue up the next command while we wait. Okie doke, and then it was OS in scan 194.com dash s for search, google.com, and then it was like dash d500. Yeah, actually using a good search engine this time. I found a lot more in a lot shorter time. So
Excellent. Time for a little test. I've hidden the subdomain forums.nightteam4.com. Use what you've learned so far to find it. It may be a long S fuzzer or a really deep OS int scan. You might also find it in another search engine's database. Despite what their marketing team says, Google isn't the only one out there. Go for it. Yeah, not the only one, but it's probably the best one. <laughs> All right. Let's do like a, what, 30 second scan? Oops, forums. I can't type that in there because that's what we're looking for. Nineteen4.com dash T. Let's do 30, yeah? Now we wait. <laughs> So there should be another hit at 15. Yep. Won't be anything at 20, but we'll see what happens. Oh, 30 was the exact... <laughs> the exact amount of time. All right. That's great. Okay. Is we doing fingerprinting? All right. Look how far you've come. Glad to see your recruitment officer is right. It won't be long until we turn you into an excellent agent. Okay, back to work. After you find the network's footprint, you'll need to scan for applications or services which are running on the server. Once you identify them, you'll want to search for any known vulnerabilities you can exploit. Services on a server need to communicate with the internet through a port, in the same way as when browsing the web, your browser connects to an application server via the default port 80. Scanning every possible port is a laborious process, but the Stinger OS comes with a distributed proxy network, using hundreds of servers to return results in seconds. Oh. Let's see how well you can find an open port and identify its running software. Agent Dylan will guide you through the explanation. So you're going to use a big-ass proxy network. To hit all 65,000 ports on a system within seconds. That's the equivalent of taking a sledgehammer and smashing down somebody's door. Like, that's going to raise some alarm bells, people. Come on. Time to learn more about our target. Fingerprint commands are pretty straightforward. To scan the www subdomain, type fingerprint www.1904.com. You can enter this command in any terminal to automatically launch the fingerprint module. Also, you can launch the terminal via your information gathering menu. I've put the exact command in your certification objective, so make sure you follow the objectives. Sure. Fingerprint. Information gathering module yep. initiated. All right. Fingerprint www.194.com. Yeah. Patchy, up to date. As you can see, we're running an Apache server on port 80 for our website. Simple stuff, and thankfully, the fingerprint module didn't identify any vulnerabilities. Can't have the public face of our organization vulnerable to attack. Anyway, a fingerprint works by testing hundreds of requests for a specific technology and recording the software version that's running, along with its known vulnerabilities. Go ahead and run another fingerprint, this time on test.1904.com. I've set the subdomain up specifically for you. Well, if you've done it specifically for me, who am I to say no? pop3 so they got some email and uh, vsftpd so some type of file transfer port scans don't take that uh, don't go that fast in real life you'll 
will now realize it's possible for a domain name to have multiple ports. In this case, none of them are vulnerable, but I'm going to give you access to a vulnerable technology. I want you to target the subdomain server.nightteam4.com with your fingerprint module. Server. There we go. Ah, MySQL. Okay. All right. Well, um, we're running long, so we're going to wrap it up here. Uh, I am liking what they're cooking up here so far. Um, picking up what they're putting down, you might say. Um, I'm, I'm liking the... Uh, the references to real world technology so far that's always it's always a big big for me because you know it's like a hollywood hollywood hacking that uh is way overblown i mean this this whole this thing here and all the graphics and that's kind of overblown too but i mean it'd be kind of boring otherwise you know you got to have a little little pizzazz i guess but um so far pretty cool so we will uh we'll keep going and we'll um See what happens next when we come back with more uh, Night Team 4.